More news starts to pour out regarding the Star Trek franchise as we get the full press junkets post-San Diego Comic-Con. We have some pre-news for Star Trek Las Vegas, some more rumors, and comment of the week. Let's pour it up! Okay, obviously we're getting a whole bunch of more news in relations to Star Trek post-San Diego Comic-Con that happened over the weekend and potentially gearing up for Star Trek Las Vegas. But we'll get to Las Vegas here in a minute. I do want to talk a little bit about some information that we've received from different interviews from Patrick Stewart, Brent Spiner, and some of the cast and crew from Star Trek Picard. The first one is, and I think many people have already seen this, this is a TV line interview that the majority of the cast did from Star Trek Picard with them. And it was confirmed, number one, that Brent Spiner was playing Data inside of the trailer that we saw him towards at the end as the kind of the stinger, and that it was confirmed as B4 is the different android that's inside of the drawer and not Lore's body or Data's charred body post the explosion on the scimitar. I think it's good to assume that Data was talking to Picard either through a vision or most likely a hologram. I'm going to say he was on a holodeck and he was engaging with him through that card game and having some tea with him, just kind of reminiscing about the good old days, uh, probably because he feels guilty about not being able to fix Data at that point. That's what I feel is what's going on there. And I do believe that Data's full body has been destroyed, uh, as was kind of implied at the end of Star Trek Nemesis. Another bit of news that came out of kind of the same TV line interview and some post interviews that Picard has done is he said that he did fight very heavily for Picard not to appear in a Starfleet uniform throughout the entire run of the season one of Picard. However, comma, he says that even though he made that big, huge argument, he wound up retracting that later on and actually fighting for him to be in a uniform for a specific flashback sequence that was supposedly being filmed this week that potentially will be including Jonathan Frakes. It's unclear as to what this flashback sequence all will entail, but I think everyone's super excited to see what that might be because we might get to see potentially the bridge of the Enterprise E again or possibly even the Enterprise F depending on what's going on in the story, or maybe even a whole new ship. But we do know for sure that Picard will be back in uniform, even though he initially fought against it. Another bit of news, and this relates to Picard as well, which is that Jeff Russo, and you guys may know him as the composer for Star Trek Discovery, has been tasked to do the soundtrack for Star Trek Picard. Now, one of the great things about Discovery, I think everyone likes the visuals, they like the special effects, and I think they like the soundtrack. Those are kind of the main three things that most people can agree on are really good about Star Trek Discovery. So the fact that they asked, you know, Jeff Russo to come back and do the soundtrack for Picard, I think is a great thing for the show, and I cannot wait to hear what kind of music he puts forth into this show. Is it going to have some kind of musical connection between Discovery, or maybe they're going to kind of do some kind of count soundtrack in the background for all of the new live action shows that kind of have a musical kind of cohesion to it, or it's going to be something totally different. I don't know, but I am excited to hear whatever it is that he does for the show. And last little tidbits of news that came out in regards to Star Trek Picard is that during a tweet from Robert Picardo, you may know him as the emergency medical hologram from Star Trek Voyager, he did a simple tweet of just saying congratulations to the cast or whatever it was for being back at, you know, for Star Trek Picard. And then Jerry Ryan replied back saying, all we now need is you. And he says, we'll see, my lips are sealed. So this could mean that we might get Robert Picardo back as the EMH. Now, he's already been fortunate enough to make an appearance outside of Star Trek Voyager to where he was had a guest appearance inside of the TNG movie First Contact. Not a lot of the DS9 and Voyager characters got the opportunity to appear outside of their shows into the films. I know uh, Kate Mulgrew got the opportunity to do that, but that's kind of a uh, kind of a select few people that have been able to do that. So getting him back would be great. And honestly, I'm excited for whoever they want to bring back. I don't want it to be so overwhelming that... There's episodes dedicated necessarily to these guest stars and these different appearances. But when's the next time we're going to be able to see some of these cast members come back and reprise their roles? Like, really? Like, when's the next time? Like, this show, in my mind, could be it. So if they can get them back for this season or even next season, I'm I'm all for it. I want to see I want to see them be able to work them in there, not just punch in our face like in in the way, but something that's kind of fun and cohesive to the story, I think would be just a lot of fun for us to enjoy as fans of Trek. Now let's go ahead and jump into Star Trek Lost. Vegas. Now, there isn't too much news in regards to Las Vegas. It is coming up in one week. I did want to go ahead and say that they have confirmed that Anson Mount will be present for several days there, including taking the stage during the Discovery panel. Myself and many others are already theorizing that the big reveal at Star Trek Las Vegas will be the announcement of a formal 
Pike TV series. And this is based off of obviously conversations and interviews that the different cast and production teams have done. And also the fact that we have three new short treks coming down the pipe, which feature Pike and the TOS team heavily. And the fact that when at San Diego Comic-Con's Hall H panel, Alex Kurtzman asked the crowd there, hey, are you guys interested in a Pike TOS show? And apparently the room just erupted with overwhelmingly yeses. And he just smiled and kind of laughed and said, well, we'll think about it. So I think that's going to be the big reveal for Star Trek Las Vegas. With that reveal of the Pike show, I think we're also potentially going to be able to get some firsthand footage of the Lower Deck show. They do have a separate panel for Lower Decks, so I don't think they're just going to show the same exact two stills that they showed at San Diego Comic-Con. I think they're going to show either more designs potentially of the new California-style ship or more of the actual footage of the show with possibly even some jokes and listening into somewhat of the voice acting work that has been done potentially. I do think that the premise of Las Vegas as of right now is going to be, I think San Diego Comic-Con was kind of the overall top stuff like kind of just to get the general audiences excited and get more general mainstream audiences interested in what's going on and then for las vegas they're going to get into i think much more detail about what's going on with the different shows and the different actors and all the different little easter eggs because they know that that's more targeted for trek fans all right let's go ahead and jump into the rumor rundown Okay, so the rumor mills have already started to churn. Uh, as far as I could tell, there are two big rumors kind of circulating around the internet right now. The first one is that Dodge, the main character that we saw inside of the Picard trailer with Picard, the kind of the, you know, what seems to be another one of the protagonists that everyone's concerned with in the trailer, played by Isa Briones. Uh, her character name is Dodge, and the rumor is that the Picard show is essentially going to be a bait and switch type situation where they're trying to lure in Trek fans into believing that the show's about Star Trek and Picard and his, you know, whole story arc, but they're actually going to flip it and make the show about this character. Um I mean, sure, maybe. I I, I would be surprised if that happened, but I don't really have a rumor rebuttal to that. It's just people are saying that and I I whatever. Sure. Another rumor, which is a little bit more substantial and potentially a little bit more damaging to the fan base right now, is something that was put forth by Robert Meyer Burnett, in which he said in his own podcast and an interview with Midnight's Edge that he's putting forth the idea that the Picard show's premise was stolen from Brian Fuller by Alex Kurtzman and Secret Hideout. This is the clip right here. So Brian had said that. And, and here's, uh, here's part of what was written in, in Brian's Data and Picard story. The planet Romulus is experiencing a worldwide evacuation as its star is about to go supernova. Leading that evacuation is Captain Data, coordinating a massive effort with fleets of starships. The Romulan star goes kablooey. It's shockwave racing toward the planet and certain destruction. Captain Data thinks quickly, employing seven of nine and a fleet of Borg expats from the long-defeated Borg to save as many as possible with mass assimilation technology. It's a brilliant and terrifying move and a questionable one. The mission is only a partial success, and those rescued were traumatized by Borg ships appearing in their atmosphere and scooping up Romulans as if they were being assimilated. This raises questions in Data's leadership style and his insensitivity to organics. Meanwhile, Ambassador Picard is having a difficult time finding homes for Romulan refugees. Their sister planet Vulcan wants nothing to do with them, and Starfleet has new concerns with Data's support of Seven of Nine and the Borg expats. With This all makes sense, obviously. Okay, so I don't have a relationship at all with Robert Meyer Burnett. I would love to sit down and talk a little bit more in depth with him about this whole situation because I did a bit of research today and tried to locate this, you know, pitch story on the WGA, WGA website, the Writers Guild of America website. I was not able to locate it at all. Uh, that doesn't mean it's not necessarily there. I'm not really familiar with the website or the different databases associated with it right now, so I could have just simply missed it. I'm not suggesting that it's not there. However, I do take issue with this narrative that's trying to be spun here. Um, if you look at the WGA profile for Brian Fuller right now, it shows that he is being credited for Short Treks and Star Trek Discovery. And you can even see at the beginning of the title screens for Star Trek Discovery, Brian Fuller is still credited for his work that he did in creating Discovery, even though he's not currently involved with it. But CBS is legally at this point required to put him down as one of the creators. 
I believe that if the storyline that they have right now for Picard, which doesn't, in my mind, sound all that much like what we saw from the trailer, there's definitely elements there, but it doesn't sound exactly like what we saw, especially the whole data subplot and a lot of that stuff seems to have very much shifted. But if they were taking his idea, they would be legally required to put him down as a either a co-creator, co-writer, whatever it is, on paper somehow, and that would be credited on his profile and would be credited in the credits for the show, but they're not doing that as of right now, so whatever the idea is, I think the concept of stealing is kind of spinning a bit of a narrative to try to imply that because there's the whole Anas Abdin lawsuit for the Tardigrades game, they're trying to imply that they've also stolen this idea for the Picard show, and I think they're doing it for two reasons. Number one, to undermine Alex Kurtzman and saying that people really reacted very positively with the Picard show, but they're trying to say like, well, the reason why you reacted so positively wasn't because this was Alex Kurtzman's idea. It's because he stole it from Brian Fuller. So, of course, you would like it. And then the second reason is to try to start a building of a narrative that this show is also stolen and that the production team, Secret Hideout, are just a bunch of thieves. And I, I take issue with that. I really do. Um, number one, that Brian Fuller was most likely contracted to probably write up different pitches by CBS for shows. So they own most likely the idea that he put forth to them, whether he shopped it around to other people or not, is irrelevant. The other thing, too, is the fact that even if he didn't get it from CBS, he was probably hired back in 2015, 2016, possibly 2015, to start production on Discovery, and the WGA registrations only last for five years. So if he wrote it prior to being hired by CBS for Discovery, it would have most likely already expired so they could use it anyways, but I don't even think that that even really matters in my opinion, because ultimately the idea of them stealing it is a little too far. If you want to say Alex Kurtzman borrowed and repurposed and couldn't come up with an original idea, that's fine, and they try to pull from whatever was Brian Fuller started, that's fine. I'm not the biggest fan of Alex Kurtzman's storylines or necessarily his stories, personally, just from a filmmaking perspective, but to imply that they stole it, in my opinion, is dismissive. I think it's a bit disrespectful to the entire creative team that has worked on Star Trek Picard to make it what it is right now, and it appears to be a big resounding success within the community, and that includes Sir Patrick Stewart, who has said repeatedly in many interviews that he worked tirelessly with the creative team to bring this story to life. And Brian Fuller wasn't in the meeting with Michael Chabon, who wrote up a 30-page story treatment, and Alex Kurtzman, who sat down with Patrick Stewart and convinced him to do the show. So whatever they had initially, they've obviously gone and taken maybe some things, obviously, from that, but they have gone in a totally new direction, and they've created a, a separate, unique thing that they've worked really hard on, and I think just implying that they've stolen it and that the credit should go to Brian Fuller and that they don't get any of the credit at all, I think is just really unfair in my opinion. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the comment of the week. This comment of the week comes from user Chris Telting, and it says, if Hobus existed, then this series is not part of my canon. Hobus was simply stupid and nonsensical. Yes, even for Star Trek. They really need to divorce themselves from those movies. This shit does not stick. Chris. I've got bad news. This shit does stick. CBS is, in fact, going to stick with the movies and the destruction of the Hobus Supernova. But for real though, Chris, I, I understand your frustration a little bit with the Hobus thing. It goes against a little bit of science, but I will say that I do think that they are trying to correct a little bit of the science about the Supernova thing. And I referenced that in my new updated Picard timeline video. So if you haven't checked that out, go and do that and you'll see what I'm talking about. So there you go. All right, guys and gals, that wraps up today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I know we didn't get too much news for today. It was a bit more rumor rundown on this particular one, but the rumors are starting to run abound, and we need to go ahead and try to get ahead of them as best as we possibly can. But I'm curious to hear what all of you guys think about this. Do you think that Alex Kurtzman and Michael Chabon stole the idea from Brian Fuller? Do you think it's changed sufficiently, or do you uh, have a different idea altogether? I'm curious to hear what you guys and gals think about. Put that stuff down below. And do you think we're going to get Robert Cardo back as the EMH? I'm curious to hear what all of you think about that as well. And I will catch all of you guys and gals next time. Live long and prosper, my trickies.